It wasn't so long after that, on the eve of the American Civil War, that once again we reflected on our tradition and heritage. At Harvard College, there was a young man who taught modern languages, but we remember him as a poet. His name was Longfellow, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Longfellow was an ardent abolitionist. His best friend was Senator Sumner, Charles Sumner, the great abolitionist senator from Massachusetts. Longfellow himself was actually a descendant of a general, General Wadsworth, who had commanded Paul Revere during the American Revolution. Longfellow knew his history, particularly the history of the Revolution. On an afternoon, April the 5th, 1860, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow visited this church. He came with his friend, George Sumner, who was the senator's brother. Together they entered this chamber. They climbed the 15 stories to see the place where the lanterns had been displayed. The next day, Longfellow, in his study in Cambridge, began to write a poem about his visit here. But it was more than just about his visit here. It is, of course, the spring of 1860. America is on the verge of civil war. The nation is in crisis. Calamity is just around the corner. Longfellow came here and was inspired by the strength of the people of 1775, of their courage and their determination, their love of freedom and liberty. And he was determined to share that with his own generation. And he would do it through his poem. It took him a while to write it. And to be sure, the poem is not entirely accurate. But by December, he had finished the poem, and it was published in the Atlantic Monthly. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. We think of the poem as being a celebration of the revolution. Yes, it was. But if we read the poem carefully, it's more than that. It's a call to arms. The poem was later, in 1863, collected in a series of essays and poems called Tales from the Wayside Inn. Longfellow was America's most popular poet in the 19th century. Everyone read Longfellow's poems. Evangeline, and Paul Revere, The Making of a Ship. And so Paul Revere's ride became reading for everyone. And through that poem, millions of Americans learned about the Old North Church, about Paul Revere, and about the beginnings of the American Revolution. In 1875, we had our centennial, 100-year celebration. It was at that centennial celebration in 1875 that the town of Concord turned to a local sculptor, not yet famous, but he would be, his name was Daniel Chester French. They asked Mr. French, would he sculpt a statue of the Minuteman who stood at Northbridge? And he did. That statue stands today overlooking Northbridge. And of course, Daniel Chester French would later go on to sculpt another famous statue, the statue of Abraham Lincoln at the Lincoln Memorial. In 1975, we celebrated the bicentennial of the events of this church in Lexington and Concord. On that occasion, the President of the United States came to visit. He came to this church, and in remembrance and in honor of what happened here on the evening of April the 18th, 1775, he lit a third lantern to symbolize the ongoing devotion that Americans have to liberty, to freedom, and to the principles of the American Revolution. And so we have remembered these events for more than 200 years in statues, in poetry, and in celebrations.